Welcome to the Mindset by Design podcast with your host, the expert Andy Murphy, where you will learn the tips, tricks, and strategies he teaches his world-class clients to give you the skills to dominate any business. What's going on, Mindset by Design crew, and welcome to episode 332. Hope you're amazing as always. Do you know what? Today, I thought I'd put a little quick episode out for you. Um, Why? Because you know what? If you're a first time listener to Mindset by Design, then welcome. Always awesome to have a new listener. What we're here about at Mindset by Design is about building new behaviors, new ways of thinking, feeling and acting using many different modalities from NLP, which I'm a world-class expert at, neuroscience concept, behavioral psychology, we're dealing with the conscious, unconscious mind, um, sprinkler spirituality, quantum physics, wherever you want to go to create absolute world-class performance. I've done this game for 19 years all over the world, and I just want to help you. And so if this is the first time, then Go and check another episode out. This is, we've got so many. We've got 331 other episodes. And this is just a short one today. But why am I doing this one today? Something that I'm a massive, massive believer in is that we stand on the shoulder of giants. What does that mean? It, it means that we learn from the people who have come before. It means that we learn from what their mistakes were, who they were as as a person, and what they accomplished in the world. And that's really powerful. One of the most amazing things that people have done is, you know, memes, quotes, memetics, right? That's what a meme is. It actually comes from a selfish gene um, book, and it's about self, self-replicating, right? That's, that's what memetics come from. That's memes, by the way, just in case you didn't know. But what I wanted to share with you, memes and quotes, they give like, they're like a, a screenshot or a, or a selfie, right? They give, they give just a glimpse into someone's thought patterns. Now, it doesn't mean that a whole person is awesome by any means. It doesn't mean that at all. What it means is that we can take a little glimpse of how they perceive the world. And quotes get butchered and all the rest of it. Sure, of course they do. Of course they do. But I think these are cool. You know what I mean? Everyone loves a good quote. It inspires us. It motivates us. It can make us think about life a different way. And sometimes we just need a little... Do you know what I mean? We just need a little something to make us feel good. And um, who better, right? If we go back through history, Leonardo da Vinci, he kind of was quite clever, wasn't he? You know what I mean? He kind of did some cool things. And if you don't know Leo, not Leo too much, Leo, he's my mate. You know, <laughs> that's why we're calling him Leo now. He'd be L next. Hey, what's up, LV? Um, that's not LDV. Yeah, that'd be more right. So we're just going to play, it's actually a cool, cool YouTube channel. It's called Quotes. Yeah, so go and check that out. And that's where I grabbed this one from. So shout out to Quotes, you know, pretty epic. And yeah, I just want to share some quotes. <laughs> that's simple. And I'm going to obviously put, put my two cents of worth in and give a different perspective. Always connected to business, always connected to growth, always connected to to empowering yourself in life. That, that's what we do, right? So we're retraining your brain to see the world a different way. And when we can just use quotes, for example, yes, we're only activating the conscious part of our mind, but that conscious part of our mind can actually allow us to change focus. And when we change focus, it doesn't mean that we're creating deep change or nothing like that, but it can allow us to see a different perspective and then therefore feel a different way in that moment. You know, and maybe you need this today, maybe you don't, but we're doing it anyway and you're gonna love it. Okay, so let's jump into this. Be nice and short one today and I will see you at the end of the show. Iron rusts from disuse. 
Water loses its purity from stagnation. Even so, does inaction sap the vigor of the mind. So, crew, let's jump into the first one. I love that quote, right? And it actually connects to episode 331, where we're talking about neurogenesis, you know? And what we're talking about neurogenesis, if you've not listened to that previous episode about depression, go and listen to it, because it is about depression, but it's about mental um, health, right? Not in mental health as in ups and downs, mental health as in keeping your brain good, But neurogenesis only occurs when we are doing action, right? So that's what they're talking about. And guess what's produced through neurogenesis? New cells, which mean new neurons, sorry, which create also what? Yes, serotonin and all these things, happy chemicals and and growth of the brain function. So I love what Leonardo said, right? Or Leo or LDV. All right, mate. Um, What it means is that yeah, we have to take action. And one of the things that we do know is that if you're in depression or sadness or you you can't get overwhelmed, what happens actually moving the body and taking physical action starts to activate different parts of us, right? So we can then feel better. And what does that mean? Well, we can get results. So what he's talking about if we don't, Well, yeah, if we're sitting there all day just in a horrible place and watching horrible things, then do you have the motivation to drive forwards? No, right? So what we need in life is a vision, a goal, a mission, right? A mission. Our brain is goal-setting machine. It is a goal-setting machine. And without that goal, then we're not going to move forwards. Now, you might be going, Andy, I don't believe in goals. Yeah, there's a lot of that out there. But what would happen if your goal was to pick your pen up or put your shoes on, right? It doesn't have to be this big lofty thing. So there's difference between visions and goals, and there's difference between micro decisions and micro habits. These are all different conversations. But what I want you to understand is that what he's talking about is get off your ass. If you're feeling low today, then do one thing that's going to move you forwards in a positive direction. That one thing will start to connect or link um, your your synapse connections, your brain, and it will start to create a new pattern. Try it. Time stays long enough for anyone who will use it. Hey, these are looking like the short quotes, right? So here's another one. So what he's talking about here is the theory of relativity by Einstein. What does that mean? Time is a perception, and it's a perception to whoever is, is, is experiencing it. So someone, you're standing on a platform, and there's a train go past. You looking at that train, it goes very, very fast, right? So the time perception is very, very fast, but the person on the train it has a different perception. So time actually, it actually changes, right? And the older we get, our time perception also alters. So time becomes actually faster, you know, because we have a different reference. So, and we also, you know, everyone's got the same 24 hours in a day. So what does that mean? Well, Jay-Z, um, Elon Musk, it's Elon, let's talk about Elon, whatever you think of Elon. He does a lot of stuff, man. He does a lot of stuff. And guess what? Well, him doing a lot of stuff, well, he has the same 24 hours in a day as we all do, but he's, how many industries is he revolutionizing now? And and also, he's just about to bring a phone out as well. It's It's wild. But time is ours to create. Just like, for example, the theory theory of relativity, you can look at why is it that when you're with somebody that bores you, time takes ages, right? But why is it with you someone who you're pumped and excited about time goes very fast? That's time. Poor is the pupil who does not surpass his master. Love this one love it right i always go back to martial arts as that's been my whole life is um it's a bit of fighting but it's it's a case of yeah you're supposed to get better than your your instructor or your sensei or whatever you want to call them right you're supposed to that's what mr Miyagi wanted for daniel san that's what yoda wanted for luke 
So they don't want you to be worse than them. They're teaching you everything they've got so you can be better than them. So you might be looking at all these online gurus and all of these people. Yeah, well, and you might be going, that's not attainable. Well, it is attainable, and it's attainable for you. And it, I wouldn't be listening to a lot of these online gurus or about anything. Or it, definitely don't. But if you do, or anyone, it's just a case of you can create a life that's way more than anyone that you grew up with, who you're around, any business idea that you see on the internet or the world. You can surpass it. There are three classes of people, those who see, those who see when they are shown, those who do not see. So what Leo, little LDV, all right, mate, but what he's, um, what he's talking about there is about conscious awareness. So it's just like you go to, for example, I don't know, maybe you can't find the keys in your house and then your partner comes over and goes, they're right there, right? Well, that's to do with your RAS, your reticular activating system in your brain. It perceives or you perceive what it is set to. So just because you can't see something doesn't mean it doesn't exist. The brain actually can only process X amount of information through its through it through its conscious mind. So it has to distort, generalize, and delete information so you can actually see. For, uh, actually, over millions of bits of information every single second, we only see a small amount. So it doesn't mean that reality doesn't exist. It doesn't mean your business and life can't be exactly how you want it. But first of all, we've got to, well, design it. Mindset by design, you get the idea. So we've got to design what we want or where we're going or the outcome, and then we can perceive it. I am not poor. Poor are those who desire many things. Now, you could talk about many different many different ways with this. You could talk about desire, right? All spiritual text talks about no attachment, no desire. That's I completely understand, right? Because if you are attaching to something, then it means it can go away because it's not actually real anyway. So it can cause damage in you. The other side is desire is actually in, in um, I'm not sure if it's Sanskrit or it's it's actually from it anyway it's 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 old old um old knowledge text desire actually means from the father so you desire something well if it's coming from the right vibration and what i mean by that it's not coming from ego it's not coming from darkness it's not coming from from hurting people if it's coming from helping the world your business your family yourself right then in a beautiful way then that is a desire and i desire to have a beautiful life so I can help millions of people. That's what I desire. Now, if if I'm attached to that or I'm trying to accumulate off that, then that's a whole different desire. So desiring in a means no attachment to me. Okay, so does that make sense? I hope so. Our life is made by the death of others. Well, that's a nice happy one, Leo. Come on, mate. <laughs> I'm teasing. Um, what he's talking about is what I was talking about before, standing on the shoulder of giants. And that's the case, right? It's even after we've gone, the gener- what our idea should be on earth is to leave the world and our families with more knowledge, money, and happiness than we did before. That's it. So we learn from people who have gone before. We learn, just like from Leonardo da Vinci that we're listening to right now. I'm not sure that's his voice like, but we're listening to him right now. And at the end of the day, that is, yeah, we're learning from his wisdom. And that's how we learn from people who have gone before us. Wisdom is the daughter of experience. I love that one too, right? Because wisdom only comes through experience. It does. You can't be wise at something if you haven't had the experience. Hence my issue with the coaching industry and and the marketing industry in general, right? These people have not 
Well, they don't have years and thousands of clients of experience, right? And unless someone has taken you to where you want to go before, then you shouldn't be using them or hiring them. That's why I've done this for 19 years. I've worked with thousands and thousands of people. I've worked with royalty. I've worked with billionaires. I've worked with world champions. I've worked with NBC stars. I've worked with yeah digital superstars, you know, people who are doing $65 million launches. And Wisdom only comes through that. And I look back like 15 years ago, 19 years ago, I've been doing this, but I look back 10 years ago. My knowledge is so vast that if I, I, I couldn't help who I can now, does that make sense? So you have to really be careful what you're projecting out to the world because you might think that you have wisdom, but most people don't. Everyone thinks they're a black belt, but they're not. They're a white belt or an orange belt. Black belt comes through years and years of highs and lows and highs, right? That's what creates wisdom. Reprove your friend in secret and praise him in public. That just sounds a bit shady, Leo, but it's not teasing. What he means by that is being honest with people. If you love someone and they're in your immediate circle, your family and friends, you have to be honest with them because they're trusting you um, to help them grow, just like they would want you to be honest with them. And if they don't, then you probably need them to be away from you, right? Because they, they have a fragile ego, they're insecure, and they're going to cause damage and drama, <laughs> a lot of drama. But if you, if you can't tell the truth to someone like they should be able to do to you, then they're the wrong person. So that's what he's talking about. But in public, no, this guy's awesome. He is awesome. He's always awesome. Or she's always awesome. Or they're always awesome. But they're awesome, right? They're awesome. Telling everyone they're awesome because they are awesome. That's why they're around you. But you're also allowed to tell them the truth. Does that make sense? God sells us all things at the price of labor. What he's talking about here is about energy exchange and action, right? If we look at the infinity sign, it moves in a figure of eight, right? What energy we put out is energy we get back. Or another way to look at it from a science point of view, what... um, patterns in our brain that we've created, what images, what thoughts, what feelings we've created about what we want. Well, guess what? That's what energy or focus goes out. That's what we're going to receive. And it's the same with happiness. It's the same with health, right? It's the same with money. It's the same with everything. What we put out, we're going to get back. That is just how it works, just how everything works, how the universe works. As a well-spent day brings happy sleep, so a life well-spent brings happy death. What he's talking about there is fulfillment. Do you know, fulfillment is a very different thing. I've seen thousands of multimillionaires as clients, and not many of them are actually fulfilled. And not being fulfilled means you're unhappy. And un- being fulfilled could be you doing, I don't know, it could be anything, right? You could give your whole career up of money and chasing this. And you could become a gardener, right? It doesn't matter. If you're fulfilled, you're going to be happy. And if you understand that, if you can do that in business and life in every capacity, then guess what? You're going to die happy because you're not going to have regrets. But if you're going against what your intuition is pulling you towards and you hate what your life is, then you have to change it. Otherwise, you're not going to be happy. Happiness comes from fulfillment. Patience serves as a protection against wrongs, as clothes do against cold. This is a great one. This is a great one because... Patience is important. It really, really is because we've got to make sure that we're going to get what we truly, truly want. How many times have we gone, I want to do this, I want that, I want here, go here, buy this. And you go, damn, I'm glad that didn't happen, right? Glad I didn't buy that car, I didn't buy this, or I didn't spend this, or do you know what I mean? And if we can understand that, then 
it's an absolute game changer because just like building muscle, it takes time. You don't get abs by just sitting on the couch and eating crisps or chips, right? You don't do that. It doesn't happen. So patience means that we're building the pattern, we're building the habit, we're building the life, we're taking action, we're doing all of those things. And we have to have patience because you don't get it in your time, you get it in what time you're supposed to receive it. Learning never exhausts the mind. So when we understand that everything in life, good or bad, comes from our imagination then we have to understand that we best get imagining, right? We ha- best use our mind. We best use our genius state. We best use us in every capacity. And every everything's come out of imagination. This, this podcast came out of someone's imagination, right? The tech, the, the cars, the wheel, right? Everything comes out of someone's imagination. So you can never be bored. And there's infinite possibility when, as long as we understand that there is. Tears come from the heart and not from the brain. Hey, now Leo's getting deep. Good old LDV. V, yeah, LDV. Um, he's getting deep here. Because if we start activating something called the heart brain, we can go into the neuroscience around it, or we could talk about the energetic field that is actually around us, that science actually shows right now. And we can we can go so many different ways with this. But at the end of the day, it's about um, only allowing the people around us that we feel good about, that we care about, that care about us. And that is the best way to do business, to do life, to do sales, to do everything, right? And it's also the, also the way that you should be creating products and services and, and ventures. It's the same thing. It has to come from the heart. If it doesn't come from the heart and you're there for the money, man, you got a lot to learn. While I thought that I was learning how to live, I have been learning how to die. We're all dying. <laughs> Do you realize that? We all are. Once we start stop growing physically, then we start degenerating. So we're dying, right? And you've got Bill, um, well, Bill Gates for sure, <laughs> that crazy man. Um, Jeff Bezos, that crazy man too. But they're looking at right now how to, well, yeah, switch off life, basically. Now, this is not a new topic, but at the end of the day, what society has done very well, and it shouldn't have, is take away the concept of death. It hides it in every capacity. It hides it when you're at funerals, right? It hides it. It makes it a mourning, a bad thing. But life is just a part of the process. But once we realize what it is and we all, there's a life is finite, then we take every day more serious. It becomes more precious. We don't waste time, effort, and energy on the things that we don't want. It enables us to really get clarity and focus on the things that we do want. That's the trick to life, right? So as long as you understand that there is going to be an end to this, what you're doing right now, well, if it's not fulfilling you and making you happy, change it. He who walks straight rarely falls. What he's talking about there is the fact that life can be absolutely simple. It can be so simple. But we get in our own way. We get in our own way so much with thinking about the past or the future the wrong way. Remembering times where things went wrong. We get traumatized when we were a kid or certain by certain people. And at the end of the day, if we got rid of all of that noise and we just tuned into our intuition, then what would happen is the, the things that would appear so easily in front of us, the ideas, the concepts, the people, it would like we would just achieve greatness so fast. So... By achieve what he's talking about is walking the straight line and not walk going off down rabbit holes of escapism, shiny object syndrome, all of these things, then we would just be where we want very, very fast. He who can copy can do. 
We don't have to reinvent the wheel with anything. With anything. You don't have to reinvent the wheel with business, life. It's it's all basically been done unless you're a superstar like Elon who's changing changing everything. But at the end of the day, he's modeled himself off somebody or somebody's psychological tactics. He's growing. It doesn't just become somebody. You 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 build yourself <laughs> into being that version. And so you with whatever business or, or life you're building right now there's people who've done it before very similar to how you want it so if you look at their psychological traits their belief systems the attitudes the values what they do their focus right and you start adapting that inside of you you can replicate those those patterns inside of you in neurolinguistics we call this um, modeling and this deep unconscious modeling that can happen the strategies of how to do everything including making a cup of coffee in the morning there's unconscious automatic strategies that you probably aren't even aware of are happening but if we can look inside of those we can break them down that's how people can look at modeling wealth or happiness or whatever it is right or health and yeah that's modeling and that's copying He who wishes to be rich in a day will be hanged in a year. Well, times have changed. You're not going to get hanged. Well, you might some places, but what he's talking about there is um, shiny object syndrome, get rich quick schemes. That's all the BS that's on the internet. Not all, obviously, but there's so much, right? They're preying on people's vulnerabilities and pressing such pain inside of them that they and telling them that they can get rich quick, get rich now. But it's not the truth. You might get wealth fast, let's just say, that's money, but you're not getting mental wealth. So we go back to that wisdom and experience thing because it's like lottery winners, right? How many lottery winners get all of that money and then do what? Yeah, they lose it all. They lose it all so fast because they don't have the wisdom. So again, it's building muscle. It's building brain muscle, life muscle, wisdom muscles. Lots of muscles going on. (laughs) It is an acknowledged fact that we perceive errors in the work of others more readily than in our own. That's one thing, right? That's, that's It's such a good thing. That's why coaching is important, right? Think about this. Every Caesar, everybody, they had, they had a, a crew of wise men around them, a council of wise men to bounce ideas off, to get different perspectives on. Because it's very hard to see things sometimes in your own, in your own reality, and you can see it very easily in somebody else's from the outside, that per- third-party perspective. So, yeah, it's important. Get a coach. Come and join what I'm doing. You'll love it. No counsel is more trustworthy than that which is given upon ships that are in peril. Yes, what he's talking about there is is pay with pain. If you don't pay with if you don't pay attention, you pay with pain. Right. But you also get the truth in those moments and you find out who the truth people are and you find out what the reality is of a situation. And at the end of the day, the people that you have around you can't be yes people. They have to be as driven, focused of you as, and, and ready for the low times as well as the highs. He who does not value life does not deserve it. I love that one for the simple fact it's life is precious. It's very precious. It can be gone in an instant. It it really, really can. I just had another friend recently pass away and, and it's like, there they are. Now they're not. There they are. Oh, now they're not. Do you understand? So it, it, life is very, very precious, but we take it very, very serious. And it is a serious thing, but it's all supposed to be a fun thing, you know? Um, and just, yeah, appreciate every breath you're taking. He who possesses most must be most afraid of loss. Think about that, right? Everybody wants things until they get things, and then you get things, and then it's like all you do is worry about having them. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? It's like you could have $10 million in the bank, and what would be your focus? Yeah, your focus would probably be making sure that $10 million stays there or it grows. 
that's what happens, right? If you've got a beautiful car, what, what, what happens? You are making sure that car doesn't get scratched or damaged or stolen. This is the thing. So when the old the old text of all, every different religion and spiritual text and whatever you want to call it, they, they yeah, they talk about not having things. <laughs> and there's a reason for that, because then you can focus on becoming the best version of you, not focused on managing all of the other noise that you've brought into your life. So, crew, there we go. There's the end of episode 332. Five-minute tune-up, whatever you want to call it. I know it's more than five minutes, but I hope you loved it. I hope you got something from it. And again, if you want big, full episodes, go and check the other ones out. But sometimes we just need something easy to listen to, which gives us a little perspective shift. And speaking of perspective shifts... Make sure that you're coming to hang out. We got some badass things happening. Badass things. We got the Radical Formula launching with my friend um, Ryan Alford from the Radcast. Go and check that out because he's one of the top marketers around with the NFL, with, with Verizon, everyone you can imagine. And he's a beast. And we're launching a mastermind together. Like now it's happening, you know. And um, what else? Will, if you're a trader, crypto, forex, options or stocks, then you need <laughs> then you need what? Well, you need the genius trader in your life. And that's getting launched as we speak. What else? We've got the Eight Figure Thinker Mental Training Academy, which is the number one premier mental training system for entrepreneurs um, that exists. And you can have it very, very soon. So what else? What else? Just find me. Come on, hang out. Andy Murphy Mindset, LinkedIn, Facebook, um, Instagram. Yeah, come and find me. Let's have a chat. But until the next time, much, much love. You have an amazing week and um, oh yeah. <laughs> Why don't you smile for me? Thanks so much for listening to today's episode of the Mindset by Design podcast with your host and NLP expert, Andy Murphy. We'll catch you next time.